Hi, so I'm here to show off some features of my Vertex tool set uh, that I'm working on. Uh, it basically contains a Vertex painting system, uh, which is pretty unique and does uh, some things other ones don't, and uses some of the newer features of Unity and some shaders to, uh, to use with it. Um, so, uh, like most Vertex painting tools, uh, it comes with a set of splat map shaders. Um, so if you're not familiar with splat mapping, it's a way to blend multiple textures together. Uh, so here we see a plane with a single texture on it uh, that's using this shader. And actually what we can do is use the vertex colors to blend between uh, different, um, different layers of that texture. Uh, so if I show the vertex data, you'll see that the vertex data is all red right now. Um, and what I can actually do is I can paint on individual channels or I can paint colors down. Uh, so for when I'm doing splat mapping, it's easier to paint on the individual channels. Uh, if I go here and I paint some green in, what you'll see is that it brings some sand into this scene. So I can increase the flow of my brush a little bit just to make this a little quicker. And I can paint some sand down where I want some sand. And what you'll notice is, is that it blends this based on height maps. And so these rocks uh, tend to get covered over later and it takes a little more, uh, a little more painting to get them to cover up. And what it'll do is it'll sort of paint in the cracks and stuff first. Now, uh, unlike a lot of vertex painters, uh, this uses a new feature in Unity 5 called Additional Vertex Streams. Uh, and what this does is it paints onto uh, a separate set of uh, mesh data that then can get combined at runtime with uh, the mesh data. So you can actually have um, dozens of instances of the same mesh, and they can all use the same mesh data. And then the Additional Vertex Streams allows you to paint uh, new colors or UV channels that are um, applied to those meshes without breaking that instancing. So you don't have to save all these to disk as a bunch of different meshes. Um, so, uh, we've all seen splat mapping, uh, but what is sort of new in this shader uh, that I haven't seen somebody do yet is to bring flow mapping into this as well. So our splat map shader here, uh, it takes up to five layers. Uh, if you're not using a layer, it gets compiled out. Um, if I go to my red channel, and I just lower the value here, I can create a little stream of lava. And so here we go, paint the lava in where I want it. And of course, lava doesn't really look that great when it's just still. Um, what we really want to do is we want to paint this so that uh, it moves along this uh, little river here. So to do that, I can switch over to the flow map uh, painting mode. Now, uh, all of these uh, painting modes have a uh, preview ability. So if I'm in the paint mode and I turn on show vertex data, it will show me uh, the current uh, channels that I'm painting. Right now I'm painting into the red channel of the, of the vertices uh, color. I can switch this to color and it will show me the, the color of the vertices. Notice that it, we also allow, uh, it also allows you to paint into any of the four UV channels. And as of Unity 5.3, uh, each UV channel is a vector 4, so that gives you a lot of data to play with on the vertices uh, that wasn't available before uh, this version of Unity. So if I go over to the flow mapping, um, what you'll see is that, uh, again, I can select what channel I want to paint the flow data into, uh, and I'm going to select the UV2 channel, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and reset this. So when I have show vertex data on, I have a couple different preview modes. One is this arrows mode, which shows me the direction that I paint. And so now I can see the flow direction and I can just see the length of the vector. If I paint faster, you see I get longer arrows. If I paint really slow, um, well, if I reset it and paint slow, then you get shorter, uh, shorter little arrows for slower motion. Um, so that's a great way to preview it. You can also go to water mode, which will preview this on a procedurally generated water texture. So you can actually come in here and see how, how it would flow. Uh, but most of the time what we want to do is, is preview this actually on our mesh. Now, once we're actually, um, when we're using our mesh data, uh, time in Unity doesn't advance during the editor. Uh, so I do some tricks to make it advance for the flow mapping preview, but it won't advance, advance unless we're in, in play mode here. So if I switch into play mode, then you can see uh, now when I paint, you can see it's moving these, um, moving the texture along those those uh, the vectors that I'm painting. Um, I can also go in here into the shader and adjust the flow mapping settings. So at the bottom of the shader, there's different speeds. So I can basically set the speed to be slower or faster depending on 
uh, you know, what kind of a look I'm going to. Now that's a global speed. The, the speed that I paint in the vector um, is multiplied by that. And I can control the intensity to basically uh, make the flow mapping, you know, more subtle or crazily intense. Um, there's another feature on the flow mapping which is called drift. And you'll notice here that these uh, layers are combining based on the height value, but uh, that is sort of um, static. So when you turn on drift, what's going to happen is, is the texture is going to kind of drift up over the edges, uh, kind of like water might. Um, and so that's one of the options you can play with depending on what type of look you're going for. Um, so the shader itself, each layer, uh, there's up to five layers, uh, can have albedo, uh, normal, uh, the metal and smoothness texture. Um, let's pull this over so we can really see it. Uh, so we can assign a metal smoothness texture. We can, uh, uh, if we don't use a texture, we can just use the smoothness and metallic amount. Uh, we have an emission amount, uh, or sorry, an emission texture, and then a multiplier and a texture scale multiplier. Uh, we support parallax height. So uh, if you're not familiar with parallax height, that creates an additional illusion of depth, which you can see happening on these stones. It uses the height map to pretend that they are uh, actually 3D a little more. And then there's an interpolation contrast between uh, layers. And so that helps control how this blend happens between these layers. So for instance, to go down between the uh, last two layers here, which is our uh, sand and our stone, and I'll go ahead and turn this off. Uh, the brush, and so I can adjust the interpolation contrast and get a really stringent, you know, crisp interpolation or a blurrier one if I want it to uh, be more like linear. Um, and so this lets us really kind of uh, tweak how these uh, materials blend together uh, in a really nice way. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the Vertex Painter has some other features. You can actually deform the mesh, paint uh, deformations, move things along the normals. Uh, to create some edits, uh, and you can bake ambient inclusion uh, into you know meshes or into a scene. You can bake some lighting in there. You can bake uh, color texture data, and there's a thing for special effects which bakes the pivot position of the mesh into uh, three channels uh, of the vertex data for you, which is actually really useful for doing special effects shaders and things like that, which I would cover in uh, in some of the tutorials. Uh, so let's see, um, the other thing you can do is you can see here under clear channels, there's two buttons right now, there's colors and UV2. So that is the data I've modified. Uh, when you're running with additional vertex streams, uh, this is the only new mesh data that you're creating. Uh, basically at runtime we take the original mesh and we create a new uh, stream of color data, a new stream of UV data, and send that to the GPU. And so then you don't have to pay for a new set of positions and tangents and normals. Uh, however, if you modify your positions, tangents, and normals, it will do all that. And this uh, tool also, you can uh, paint on as many meshes as you want. Uh, you don't have to save them to disk because it's using an additional vertex stream. Uh, but I do provide uh, tools to combine and save meshes to disk or to save meshes uh, with your full paint job. Um, so if you go in and you paint something very specific and get it looking the way you want, and you want it to always be that way in the scene, you might as well save that out as a new mesh uh, and not use the additional vertex stream feature um, to uh, have per instance versions of that. So yeah, uh, I'm still working on this. I'll probably add a lot more stuff to it. It comes with a lot of examples. And uh, let me know what you think and what you think might be useful to it. And uh, that'd be great. Thanks.